Hello and welcome, RC Shimi in the hangar. Today I show you the Quanum Fetchuck diversity module. It's called HB5808. I will show you how to install it in the Fetchuck goggles and then I will test it outside uh, and compare it to the standard module. Let's start replacing the internal receiver port which sits here. From from the various modules I have. Standard FedShark 5H. But the range I got from these last flights wasn't too impressive. So I also got this FSV2445. A single receiver dual antenna diversity. And this is not as good as a real two receiver diversity system. So the reception I got from this was not really good. And today in the mail was this Quanum Fetchuck Diversity thingy. And this kind of looks like the LaForge, the two-part thing. Yeah, the advantage of a two-part system, uh, contrary to the Furious 2D Diversity, which has just a module on one side, the advantage here is that you have more space, obviously, and you have two antennas uh, on the two sides of your goggles. And here I also have to figure out a way to fit this nicely in there. I mean, I already removed this head tracker board that was sitting in there and doing nothing for me because I don't use head tracking. Uh, so now I have the space. But I will have to adjust the door, cut something out here with a Dremel. And here as well, yeah, maybe this, this one could work. So we will see. There have been only three screws um, in the middle and two on the side. And then you have to do something ugly, you have to apply force to take these two halves apart and really take care not to tear out those flat cables anywhere. But now I have access to the insides and can see how I route the cable here. So I just drilled a hole for this side and I also thought I need some form of support so I just have this foam part fitted. I'll tuck it in and have it supporting the back of this module and then it should just be good in there. That's what I had to do to my door to, so it would fit. It was important to file down the inner sides, to cut down this part here so that it actually fits. Will it, will it still work if I plug it in? Will it smell weird? Or will it just do nothing like it does at the moment? Ah, okay, I have to turn it on. And yes, it works. Okay, quick browse through the menu. So the middle button is the menu button. You can do an auto search, a band scan. A band scan is actually nice. And I plugged in the vortex. I found the best channel. So band scanner, nice option. The setup menu. You can order between channels, which is you browse through different bands and then switch up and down with the up and down button. And if you have the order in frequency, you can really move through all bands and frequency steps. So I'm now at 5860 and if I press up I'm at 5865, 66 so it really advances in the frequency range and doesn't care about the band actually. I'm used to having it in the channel order and now you see that's the channel uh, order mode band A, band B, band E, I search for band F Channel 1. And if I press two or more seconds here, it saved 
channel 1 5740 and will boot up with this channel all the time. Yeah, and if you do nothing for a few seconds, it will go out in the main screen, display the channel and the band in large letters, your call sign and 5740. The auto is for the diversity, I think. So as you've seen, it involves a bit of fiddling around with the aesthetics of your goggles. And this is a quick and easy solution here. I might take a better or better looking option <laughs> soon, but at the moment it just works. It would be nice, of course, if they would supply you uh, two fitting plastic covers, so you don't have to do this. And this just not looks nice, but it's okay. If you want to have it as easy as possible, you just would install the main module here, use the cables on the outside and have the other module maybe up here or somewhere. So you can go the easy route. Opening the goggles, it wasn't hard, I mean three screws. Maybe some guys of you don't like to disassemble $500 goggles, but I'm happy with how it looks and how it works. So go outside and take a look. Okay, testing the Quantum Fetchak module while flying the Vortex 150 here around home. And after the first flight I will swap to the standard Fetchak module again and see if there's any difference. I'll record it here so you can see the difference. With only one antenna to compare the receivers directly. Standard module in here without a second antenna, so just this TBS triumph here, and gonna see how it works. The new model is definitely better, has a better reception. It was just so much fun, I had little to no breakup or acceptable breakup when going behind line of sight a bit. And this all on 25 milliwatts, so what can you expect more? So the next flight with the FR632 and one TBS Triumph. Since the video wasn't too good, I swapped to the second receiver. Maybe one receiver is worse than the other here because normally this works really good. I will also try the second receiver only here on this diversity setup and see how this differs from this receiver. I mean, it should be the same, but we will see. Second receiver here worked just as good as the first, so both receivers work kind of the same and are awesome. Now I'm gonna use two antennas and just have some fun.
<laughs> Best ride ever. I hope the cam angle was okay, but uh, it's not perfect. But yeah. Best HD cam for this tiny quad. Hope you enjoyed the ride. There's a bit of plastic. Test of the diversity was okay. I flew this road up and then all the way through the woods and down this road. And it worked with only a few glitches. So really, really happy about the setup. Not super easy to fit the run cam on there. On each battery swap you need to adjust the cam, but it's okay. And of course it feels a bit underpowered, but it's okay. Okay, so from the flights outside I'm super happy with the performance and now it's good enough for me that I have this ultra mobile solution and don't need my external tower setup. I mean I love the FR632 and I often did fall back to it because I simply wasn't uh, satisfied with the quality of the built-in modules. And I need this extra confidence to go a bit further or to fly through the woods and so, something like this. But with this diversity it really works nice and even a single receiver of this works nice enough. What I've learned is that my FR632 has one, not faulty, but one worse module in it, one worse receiver. But I probably won't use the FR632 too often now because this is really a good solution and I was really looking forward to this. Of course for a long range flight where you have two helical antennas and want to have them pointed always in the same direction, I might, I might go with the tower and not the goggles because the goggles are in movement and so forth. But yeah, for these freestyle fly anywhere sessions, the diversity module is really, really great. I've seen the good comparison over at Joshua Bardwell's channel. 
uh, check this out and maybe compare it to the comparison you saw here from me. I think they're all about the same, the, the better diversity modules now. What's not good is the antenna diversity is not really good and it also did cost around $50. So yeah. price point on these really nice. I don't know about the power consumption yet. I think it's a bit higher as the normal module of course, but if you have two batteries, it's, it's okay. I will say thank you and goodbye and thanks for watching right now. Until the next time.